Once there was a skunk and a mouse. Wait, wait a second. Oh yeah, looking for lunch, and the skunk said, "What's that crowd over there?" Mouse said, "Let's go see. It looks like a bunny over there." Why is everyone looking at the bunny? Said Skunk. Just because it's cute doesn't mean everyone has to pay so much attention to it. Mouse said, let's go find someone who likes us because we know no one likes us because we are, my, we, we are a mouse and a skunk. So they went off to find an animal who likes them they found an old wise owl. The owl said, they asked the owl, do you know anyone who likes skunks and mice? And it said, yes, you are on the right path, just go straight. So they went straight and they kept going until they started to hear a cry. They looked over and they kept looking and looking until they found this a sad fox that had its paw under a rock. So they helped the fox by lifting the rock off its paw, and then it said, thank you, thank you, how, my, how can I repay you? And they said, you don't need to repay us, you can, you can come along though. So they went on, they kept going and kept going until they heard another cry, and they saw a squirrel under a cage, under a cage. And it was crying and it said, help, help, I'm under a cage, I'm stuck. And so they lifted the cage off and the squirrel was happy. And so then they kept going on for a little while until they realized, um, I don't have, we don't have to think what other people think, we just have to think what we think. So they thought for the rest, for now on, they thought they don't have to believe what other people think, they just have to believe what they think. That end. Once upon a time when there was only trees, animals, land, sky, and sea, and no berries, a chipmunk and a raccoon were roaming the forest, and, they ra and the chipmunk said, I'm tired, I'm tired of eating nuts, and the raccoon said, oh yeah, well I'm tired of eating trash. And then the chipmunk said, we need something else to eat. Something that's a great idea, so, said the rat. Wait, no, something called berries. So they called their friends the ants and the bee. And the ants and the bee said, how can we help you? And they said, We're, we need to make something called berries. Okay said the ant and the ants and the bees. The bee said, I can pollinate for you. And the ant said, we can dig holes for the seeds. And the chipmunk said, I will clear leaves so that it can so that the plants can get sun and rain. Now the raccoon felt lonely and felt like he wasn't any use to anything. So he said, What can I do? And so they said, Well, we still need seeds. So, so the raccoon said, oh, I know something. And so they, the chipmunk followed the raccoon off into the forest. And over by here, they saw, he said, taste this. And the squirrel ate it and said, this is really good. What is it? And he said, I don't know. It's just some kind of syrupy substance that I found over by this tree. And so... They went over the, to the hole that the ants dug, put it, put the syrupy substance in the hole, and soon, there came a berry bush. And so, the squirrel and the raccoon tasted one of these. And they said, mm, this is really good, let's plant more. And so they went back over and found some more syrupies. 
and they planted more berries all over the forest. And then the bee pollinated. The, and then the bee pollinated the berries and the berries were grown and that's how berries were made. The end. Once upon a time, a long time ago, there was a group of two birds, a cardinal and a goldfin, and a group of two mammals, a squirrel and a rabbit. One day, both animal groups were walking along in the forest one day when they, fe when they came across a Native American village with a bunch of berries in them. Mmm, let's get these berries, said the birds. No, we found them first. Well, we want the berries. No, they're ours. So they decided to have a battle of wits over who would get the berries. And they both went back to their homes to plan. Later that day, the birds were coming to the village to get the berries. We're going to be here first, and they're never going to find us. When suddenly, a net dropped on them, and they couldn't get out of it. But they didn't want the mammals to get the berries out. So this is what they decided. Hey, why don't we pack a hole, some holes around the berries so they'll fall in. So they scooted around the village and pecked holes that were very deep around the berries so that the animals, so that the other animals couldn't get it. <coughs> now the two mammals came. Oh my gosh, we're going to get the berries because they're stuck in our trap. Wah! They fell into the hole. And while both groups of animals were stuck, a hand came in from one of the people in the village and took the berries and fruit to eat. Finally, the birds got out of the net and the... Um, Mammals got out of the hole, and they realized how wrong they had been. We really should have just shared the berries. Yeah, now they're all gone. So they decided from now on, they'd share with each other and be thankful for what they had. The end. Larva is hard. Yeah, I know. Wah, I want my mommy. May I speak with my sister, please? My daughter. Happy metamorphosis. Be a good baby. Thanks, Mommy. A few months later, Intruder! Intruder! Intruder, intruder, quiet down. Who's the intruder? An ant. He's going to come to steal our pollen. Send in the scout. Why are you here? I just need some pollen for my queen. She's deadly ill, and her last wish is for some pollen to decorate her funeral. Wow! 
Uh, I'll get you your pollen. Thank you. Now I'm off. My queen, my queen, I bought you my, your pollen. Thank you, my youngling. Now, now. I just came to say you're welcome for the pollen. And my friends and I worked really hard to get that for you. Why, thank you. Why? Why could you? What do you mean? You gave away that pollen. No, I didn't. The queen said I could. No, she didn't, you liar. Dun 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 dun. Queen, I'm sorry for stealing the pollen for my friend Aunt T. Well, I forgive you. Thank you. Oh no, you had to use your stinger. Now she's dead. Why? Wait, wrong page. Wrong page. What a beautiful day. Time to get some breakfast. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Hi. Hi. Brock. Sarah. Do you come here often? Not normally. You look nice. Thanks. Do you want to come back here for a date? Sure. At the date. Are you liking your meal? Yes. Ow! What was that for? Corn. Must find corn. Wait. <coughs> corn. I don't remember how I did this voice. Corn. Must find corn. Your girlfriend is beautiful. You will never get her. <laughs> Baba. -ba. <laughs> he wants corn. Here you go. Now go away. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm just glad. Done. Or who wants to hear the 25 more, 24 more page version? <laughs> Thank you.
This, sto this story is called The Cox and the Fox, based on the Aesop fable, The Dog, the Cock, and the Fox. One day, there were two cocks that were very much of the best of friends who decided to leave the farmyard because they wanted to see some of the world. So they, deci they decided to go out onto the nearest road, and they had a very uneventful, unevent uneventful but enjoyable day. But then night came, and they realized that they needed to find a place to rest for the night. Night. The two cocks found a very tall tree that had been hit by lightning, so the inside was hollow. The two cocks decided to perch on one of its branches. The next morning, the cock, the cock who, who forgot where he was crowed, but instead of waking up the farmer, he woke up a nearby fox who immediately knew that his, bre that his breakfast was nearby. The fox then came to the tree and asked the cock if, uh, if he could come down by using flattering words. But the cock, the cock was very sly. and. He's, he said to please come around to the other side of the tree and he will come down. The fox went to the other side of the tree, but then the two cocks t together flap, flapped and bit and bit and bacawed all over the fox that eventually the fox ran away, knowing that he would never get his, get his breakfast. The two, the two cocks then decided it was time to continue on their advent adventure. And they had, and it was very uneventful, but uh, as enjoyable as before. The end. Once there was a um, a wolf and a rabbit. The wolf wanted breakfast and the rabbit didn't want to be the breakfast so the wolf um so the wolf chased after the rabbit and then eventually the rabbit got to like the rabbit couldn't go any further and the rabbit said don't eat me please the wolf said why should i not eat you and the rabbit said, because I don't have any place to hide. The wolf said, well, I don't have any place to rest and eat my breakfast. And they started talking, and the wolf ended up not eating the rabbit. And they started agreeing. And they said, boy, we need something that we can rest under and hide in. So they both thought and thought. And... The rabbit said, how about we make something like a house? And the wolf said, no, we don't have the materials. And the rabbit said, oh, yeah. So then, so then they finally agreed on something, something that they can grow and that other animals can enjoy too. So they thought of a tree and so the wolf said how about we make something with a large stem 
or with bark on it and like a bush on top, like a big version of a bush. So they found bushes which were invented or were, and they did exist. And then they pushed them up to make trees. Yes, now we have trees, said the rabbit. Now what are we gonna do? Now we're going to make a home in them. And so the wolf got to rest under the tree and the rabbit got to go in the hole. But the wolf was still hungry and the rabbit still wanted a bigger home and friends to live with him. So the wolf realized that um, they could always, um, they could always eat from the top of the tree. So the rabbit hopped on the wolf and got food from the tree and the wolf um, and brought it down for them to share. And the rabbit met friends, which are in the hole, and they got what they wanted at the end. This story is called The Snake and the Rat. So one day there was a snake and a rat. The snake wanted to eat the rat. And the rat didn't want to be eaten. So they were fighting under a tree. And a bee and a butterfly, a butterfly came on and it said, I can hear you all the way from the, or I can hear you all the way from where I'm calling you. And so they, and over there fighting, they couldn't hear. Then the bat came along and said, your fighting shook the tree and the tree fell down and that's where I was nesting. Now I have to find a whole new nest because of your fighting. And then the ants came out of the ground and said, all your fighting is shaking the ground and you in our nest and we're not comfortable in our nest. And now you're almost stepping on us. And then finally, after all the animals came by, they decided that the snake wouldn't eat the rat, and that um, the rat shouldn't bother the snake, so the snake won't eat the rat. And then they all went back to their homes. The end.